Yi Song Ye used to be considered the best legendary commander in Rise of Kingdoms, but now we are halfway through 2024 and people are wondering, is he still worth using in Rise of Kingdoms? And especially if you're a brand new player, should you be expertising Yi Song Ye in 2024 or not? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Real quick, we are so close to 70,000 subscribers, like literally less than a thousand away at the time of recording this. So please consider subscribing. It's fast. It's free. You can unsub later if you want to. And while you're down there, drop a thumbs up to help push this video out into the algorithm. Okay, first, let's go over how you actually get Yi Song Ye. If you're a brand new player, you might be hearing a lot about this commander, but not actually knowing how you get your hands on him. And it's pretty straightforward. You can get Yi Song Ye from the Wheel of Fortune. He's one of the first Wheel of Fortune commanders that you're going to get your hands on in Rise of Kingdoms. You first will see Richard the first, and then afterwards you will see Yi Song Ye. And you'll have to spend some gems to get him. It takes 10 sculptures to summon him. And then after that, you can either continue to spin his Wheel of Fortune or you can spend universal legendary commander sculptures on him. Yi Song Ye is an archer garrison and skill tree legendary commander here in the game. And just as a quick refresher, let's go over his skills real quick. His active skill when he's not expertise says that he deals 1400 damage factors to up to five enemy troops in a forward facing fan shaped area. And each additional target reduces the damage to each target by 15%. His second skill says that he has a 10% chance when he launches a basic attack to gain 100 extra rage and 100 archer unit attack for three seconds with a five second cooldown this is a really nice rage engine for Yi song ye however some commanders that he's paired with don't really get that much value out of this compared to others which we'll talk about later in the video his third skill is probably his worst skill by far and it says if you're serving as your city garrison commander your garrison gains 10 percent attack and watchtower gains 10 percent attack now this is only for your city this does not work in flags fortresses passes or anything like that and also watchtowers typically die within like three or five turns in rise of kingdoms they're utterly useless like literally they're basically cosmetic they literally don't do anything so this is just generally like not that great of a skill his fourth skill is also insanely good this gives you 50 percent more skill damage it says this includes direct damage additional damage does not include range damage at all so keep that in mind and finally his expertise was one of the most unique and special and powerful expertises in the game back in the day nowadays it's not as impressive as it used to be but it basically converts his aoe from a fan shape to a circular aoe and it bumps up the damage factor from 1400 to 1700 so he's now going to be hitting more targets on average because there's just more area for those targets to be hit in and also his damage goes up tremendously for an early game commander this is a super powerful aoe skill damage machine with a built-in rage engine it's honestly insane he's much better than almost every other season one legendary commander in the game with an exception of like maybe minamoto and there's a couple other commanders that we'll talk about in just a second but like he is probably the best season one commander in the entire game and even in season two of kvk he still remains extremely strong and in season of conquest season three and beyond some players do still find use for him and we'll talk about those later in the video we'll cover all the best commander pairings now if you're a brand new player and you don't understand formations at all just keep in mind that the wedge formation is by far the best formation for Yi song Ye. it's not even close it's not even worth thinking about all the other ones here because skill damage is the name of the game for him now the other thing we have to talk about with regards to season of conquest and kvk3 is his museum relic he does actually have a pretty good museum relic at level one he gets 10 percent archer defense and at level two he gets 20% archer defense he also has three percent skill damage and that bumps up to five percent skill damage so in total 55 percent bonus skill damage for Yi song ye if he's got a wedge formation that is 60 if he has the ottoman empire that's 65 and if you have twilight falls that's your city skin that's going to be 70 percent skill damage it's actually insane how much skill damage you can stack onto Yi song ye and that's not even considering all the other ways that you can get skill damage in the game which we'll talk about later the last thing we have to touch on about the relic here is that the developers have already confirmed that level three relics do exist and they are coming to the game they They've already confirmed the level three relics for all of the infantry commanders in the museum, which means that they're not going to stop there. They're going to continue to add more relic levels for the rest of the commanders in the game. It would be unfair if they only did it for infantry. So expect Yi Song Ye to get an updated relic at some point in the future. It seems based on the infantry relics that they're just going to get a very minor bump from level two to level three. So I wouldn't really expect anything insane out of another relic tier. It could bump up to 25 
85% archer defense and 7% skill damage. And honestly, they might not even change the skill damage. It might stay at five. So just keep that in mind. I don't expect anything crazy here to change, but you know, depending on when you're watching this, you might have a third tier of relic. So now that we know what his skills do and his relic and where all of his stats are coming from, let's go ahead and look at some talent builds. And honestly, you're probably never going to use E song a as a primary commander. So you don't really need to worry about the talents because if you guys didn't know the talents of the primary commander in your army are the only talents that actually matter. So if you have a secondary, whatever talent set they have, it doesn't, it literally does not matter at all. And E song a is almost exclusively used as a secondary commander because he is basically what players consider a glass cannon. He's outputting an insane amount of damage per second and he becomes a problem if he's left alone. And so you really want to target him down and kill him as fast as possible. And so if people see E song in the field, they typically kill him. So a good strategy is to hide him behind another commander, which we'll talk about in just a second. But if you are using him as primary for whatever reason, this is pretty much the only talent build that I would ever consider using for open field PVP. You can use this also. I mean, obviously PVE as well, but coming up here, grabbing feral nature gives you a really nice rage engine for E song a, and you get reduced as well this is basically going to guarantee that you're going to fire your active skills as fast as possible and yes you will probably over rage at some points but the trade-off is that you know you might actually cast before your enemy and that is a big deal you also obviously grab burning blood and tactical mastery and heraldic shield all these talents in the skill tree are insanely good and including clarity as well and then the archer tree you come up here you grab venomous sting for eight percent more skill damage that is insanely good now we're talking about like 78 percent skill damage i forgot where we left off on the last one with tactical mastery that becomes 81 okay so you can see how insane the skill damage is here on e song a you also grab razor sharp for even more rage and you've got a couple of points left over i put three points into the normal damage here with rapid fire you get three points in arrows knocked and then you have two points left you can grab full quiver and you're good to go that's pretty much it this is like the best build I wouldn't even consider anything else really now later in the video when I cover the best commander pairs I'll also cover some different talent builds for those other primary commanders or e song a so stay tuned for that before we do that i just want to go over real quick just to recap for e song a the pros of e song a. i want to make this abundantly clear he is probably the best early game commander in the game he has a massive aoe skill damage basically the best aoe in the early game and one of the best aoe's in the entire game even in season of conquest and he also has one of the highest skill damage just vanilla skill damage bonuses in the entire game we have never seen a 50 percent skill damage bonus just flat out ever again okay this is so good that we've never seen this on any other commander moving forward so keep that in mind it is actually insane how much skill damage he is outputting now the downsides or the cons of e song a he's quite squishy you'll notice on his skills he only has a 10 percent chance of 100 percent attack for three seconds for archers and that's it there's no other actual stats here there's no archer defense there's no archer health now he does get up to 20 percent archer defense from his museum relic but besides that that's pretty much it so he has 20 percent archer defense and a hit or miss archer attack bonus and that just does not age super well into season of conquest when we talk about other commanders such as Zhuge Liang who gets 30 percent health here he also gains a chance at archer attack on top of that overall a much better stat distribution we also can look at Harmon for example 20 percent attack 20 percent defense 15 percent march speed he also has a lot of other things that he's doing here which is nice you can also look at commanders such as Nebu he has 30 percent defense 15 percent march speed as well plus some bonus damage and debuffs and stuff here so like even at, looking at some of the older season of conquest commanders like even nebu is more tanky with his built-in kit than you would see from isong right so really like he is sort of a glass cannon he's kind of squishy and the other thing that you'll notice from these other commanders that i pointed out that isong is missing is march speed he is one of the slowest commanders in the entire game there are very few commanders that are slower than isong which is unfortunate fortunate because if you are a glass cannon then the last thing you want to be is slow you do not want to be caught in the open field you want to be able to run away and unfortunately isong a cannot do that on his own he will need to be paired with somebody who has some nice march speed which we'll talk about later in the video and as i mentioned before he is an easy target okay so he will be targeted if he is seen in the open field and especially if he is a primary commander everyone's going to know kill the isong a and also he is countered in the early game 
by a very popular commander pairing that a lot of the mid low and even high spenders use which is minamoto with Cao Cao. okay this is a really high single target dps cavalry march and it is going to counter isong a pretty strongly okay it's a lot of single target damage it's very fast there's march speed on both of these commanders and like we said before isong a cannot get away so really easily countered in the early game if you can spot the isong a okay but if he's left uncountered then he will pump out an insane amount of aoe skill damage and that is why he is still probably the best early game commander in all of rise of kingdoms so then the question becomes okay well you know if he doesn't age super well anymore is it possible to do like a 5511 or a 5515 or even like a 5115 right honestly it's it's not okay if you're gonna go with the isong if you're gonna spend the sculptures you just gotta go all in you just get the expertise and that's it that's that's kind of how everyone has always played it with isong a you get a bump in the damage factor i mean if you don't get it 1400 damage factor is i mean it's fine like realistically it's not horrible but it is worse than nebu and if you're going to do that like you might as well just go for nebu right like nebu has more defense he has march speed and he gets more damage and a debuff so if you're not going to expertise song a then really you can for the same amount of sculptures like 5511 you can get so many better commanders for that same sculpture investment that it's just not worth it so if you're not getting the circular aoe it's not worth getting so then the question becomes okay if you have to expertise him for him to be good or usable who should expertise he's on yet is he still worth getting in rise of kingdoms and the answer for most players probably 90 percent of you guys watching this video the answer is no you should not be getting isong a it's kind of unfortunate even though he is the most powerful early game commander he is one of the best commanders to transition in the season of conquest which we will talk about in just a minute but the value just is not there anymore for the sculpture investment 690 sculptures in isong a is 690 sculptures that you're not putting into commanders that are much better like Liu Che, like Nevsky, like CPO Prime. Like really, there's just so many better commanders, you know, Harmon Prime. There's so many better options these days that it's kind of unfortunate. But there are some players that should be getting Isong Ye in the early game, and I'm gonna list those off right now. First of all, if you are an advanced player who is free to play and you know what you're doing, this is not your first account. If you are a returning player and you've got tons of time, like literally three plus hours a day to play the game like every single day then you might consider getting isong a because you're going to get a lot of value out of the chaining that you can do with isong a and that is another one of sort of the i guess adjacent pros of isong a it's an indirect benefit that you get from the circular aoe it just makes it a lot easier to chain barbarians in the open field if you guys don't know what that means basically it means you're going to be attacking a barbarian and the circular aoe is going to make it easier to trigger an attack from a nearby barbarian that's going to attack you at no additional action point cost okay so if you're a super advanced early game player and you know rise of kingdoms in and out and you've played the game for a long time and you know exactly what you're doing and you're doing like a restart project or something like that then isong a might still be a good investment for you you're going to have them for kvk one and two which is going to be really nice you're going to use them for pve events as well like there's so many ways that you can still use isong a but most players are not going to be that advanced they're not going to grind that much they don't have the time to play that much to get the value out of isong a these days another player that should be expertising isong a is the whale players so if you're like max purchasing i would say two bundles or more per month then you probably can get good use out of isong yeah you're probably going to get you know a lot of vip points you're going to be pushing pretty heavy in the early game you're going to be getting a lot more sculptures than your average player because you're going to be able to participate in things like the mightiest governor and all the different power-up events and things like that and so if you are a you know mid or high spender a whale player then you know like i said maxing two or more bundles per month you know five six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars a month on the game if that's you in the early game in kvk like pre kvk one like at the start of the server then okay yeah isong a is probably going to be a good investment for you you're going to be able to transition into season of conquest really effectively and also you can use isong a to absolutely demolish the early game competition you're going to perform so well in the open field and you might even be qualified to be a rally leader and yes you can in the early game rally with isong a you might even be able to garrison with isong a because he does have the garrison tree so being a mega whale with isong a will help you out a ton so keep that in mind now finally the last type of player that might consider maxing isong a in the early game is a player who want to perform well in kvk one and two and have a slightly easier transition in the season of conquest and you know enjoy the early game knowing full well that you are nerfing 
your you know end game performance right like the sculptures you spend here could be spent on something better and you know that fully and you know that you accept that going into it but you do want to perform well in kvk one and two and you want to have a commander that you can use to transition in the sock then okay you song is pretty much your only choice there the only other option might be alex but that's you can watch my alexander the great video if you want to know more about that or my infantry investment guide for free to play players i posted that a few months ago go ahead and check that out on the channel if you're curious about alexander the great instead of e song but that's pretty much it everybody else should be skipping e song these days he is unfortunately no longer the greatest early game commander that you know gives you infinite value forever he's still good but he's just so outclassed in the late game that most players should unfortunately be skipping him now for those of you that are still watching who still want to use e song and you still are going to invest in him first We'll talk about KVKs one and two. Who can you be using with Yi Song A? What are the best commander pairs? Then we'll talk about the season three and end game season of conquest commander pairings. And that will be that. So, first of all, in KVK one, you can have a couple of different commander pairings here. First of all, I would say probably the best commander pairing is Footmos. Okay. In the early game, this is insane. Honestly, I've seen rallies on player cities with this. Footmos primary with Yi Song A as the secondary to kind of hide that Yi Song A. Also, the sport tree is a little bit more tanky than this than the skill tree the most has a three target 1000 damage factor aoe which is really nice you gain 15 percent attack 10 percent march speed and you deal 15 percent more damage outside of territory which is really good you also get 10 percent archer defense and a 10 percent chance to increase the skill damage that the target receives you also take less counter attack damage and you have a 10 percent chance to deal an instant proc damage factor and finally you take five percent less damage from infantry units and you get a 30 percent bonus to normal damage whenever you use an active skill with an eight second cooldown the synergy here is a amazing in the early game that and YSG were built to be paired together that Mo's you can get him in a couple of different ways I believe he comes around it doesn't say it here but I'm pretty sure he shows up on the wheel of fortune as well in kvk2 so there's a few ways that you can get your hands on him obviously you can get him for free from the gold keys as well this is more of a whale play right like you know it, only whales are going to have a really powerful that in the early game moving on from that a more free-to-play friendly option would be something like Sun Tzu okay you do Sun Tzu primary with Yisong a secondary this would be a full infantry build and the reason for this is because they both have five target aoe's it's actually insane he also gives you 20 percent more skill damage so you remember that 81 percent skill damage bonus we talked about before now it's going to be 101 okay now you know that assumes perfect conditions ottoman empire twilight fall city skin all that stuff but like the skill damage between these pair this pair is insane plus you'll get 10 percent less damage taken which is very tanky for an epic commander so kind of a match made in heaven here also you could do if you wanted to kusanoki and isongye it would be a great pair they also have the same talent tree here so you know your whichever one is primary is the way you're gonna go it doesn't really matter kvk1 you could probably get away with kusunoki primary kvk2 you probably can't people just are going to be hunting for those purple commanders but you get a ton of stats here for your archer commanders as as an epic right i mean for an epic that's pretty good so yeah this is also a cleanse which is really nice and you get a nice little three target aoe which is pretty cool another great choice might be ethel fled now ethel fled with isong a is again quite squishy but you do have two five target aoe is here which is honestly insane you're going to be buffing this with your isong a as well he has you know all that skill damage which is really really great you also take less counterattack damage which in the early game you know counterattack damage is kind of meaningful you know in the late game obviously all the damage factor comes from aoe but in the early game like when a lot of players are kind of weak like counterattack damage is 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 definitely something you're going to be noticing i don't love this pairing but it is definitely something that you could do if you wanted to go all in on that glass cannon approach obviously el cid is like the original sort of whale choice for the early game here because he is the archer and skill legend that you can get from the gold keys before that most came into the game and this was your best pairing obviously the most is just a little bit better but that doesn't mean that El Cid is bad because El Cid does have a nice disable on the active skill here which is really nice no basic attacks or active skills for one second means that they're going to miss out on a turn of rage a turn of normal attack damage and if they were going to use their skill that turn they won't which is nice nice little delay there plus he has a really nice instant proc damage here it is 10 percent chance for a thousand damage factor kind of insane stuff there when you think about it plus he gets a lot of march speed which like we said earlier this is really what you want for e song a plus the archer defense that's going to be a little bit tanky and his fourth skill is quite good when you get low you get a ton of march speed and you deal a lot more damage so el cid still a great early game choice for e song a if you're looking to be more of an infantry main player but you still want to get e song a because you know how good he is you could do a pyrus 
primary with Lee Song Ye secondary. There is more synergy here than you might think, because if you look at Lee Song Ye's kit, he doesn't really care that much about archers, right? Like the archer attack here is the only thing on his kit in KVK one that would even matter at all because his museum relic isn't really going to kick in until a little bit later. So with that being said, you could do the Pyrus primary full infantry and really benefit from, you know, he's got the defense tree. So he's a little bit tankier. He's infantry, which by default are going to be a little bit more tanky as well. Plus he has a nice single target damage factor and you're going to get 10% health, 15% March speed, 20% more normal damage here. You're going to get 20% bonus attack and a 10% chance for a nice shielding factor as well. You take 20% less skill damage. You deal 10% more damage if you have a shield and you gain a bonus attack here as well. It's an instant proc chance, but overall the synergy here is nice and he does deal 1400 single target damage which is going to be boosted by 50 percent from your e song a's fourth skill so overall like pyrus is bringing the you know he's still packing a punch but he's just much more tanky than some of the other options that you have if you're looking at exclusively the archers but he's still benefiting from the massive amounts of skill damage on Lee Song Ye. So it's kind of a best of both worlds. He's tanky. He has the stats. He has the March speed. And then Lee Song Ye is behind him causing chaos, massive DPS, massive AOE. And that is a really honestly a great open field pairing in KBK one. Another pairing that players used to use a lot. I don't know if people still use it. I suspect that they do in KBK one would be Martel primary Lee Song Ye secondary. Now, again, the reason for this is just like with Pyrus infantry defense tree, very tanky commander here. Now he's even more tanky than Pyrus because he gets a 1200 damage factor shield, which in the early game is actually pretty meaningful. He also gets 30% bonus to all damage for four seconds, which means if he's on a secondary, his massive AOE is going to hit while he has 30% more damage, which is insane. He also gets 15% health and 15% defense when he's not expertise or 2020 20 and 20% March speed when he is in kvk1 he's probably not going to be expertise so keep that in mind but also he deals 30 percent more counterattack damage so in the open field this is probably one of your most tanky options for e song a and to keep e song a alive and spreading that circular aoe skill damage the downside with martel compared to pyrus is that this 50 percent skill damage is completely wasted on martel he has no skill damage at all on his kit whereas if you paired it with pyrus instead he does have some skill damage here to benefit from that really really nice bonus on the fourth skill from e song a so if you want a more tanky option go with martel but if you want a nice hybrid build that's going to deal even more damage i would go with pyrus those are your two infantry main choices for e song and kvk1 and then finally for kvk2 we have two choices really it's only one i think alexander the great is a great choice for e song a in kvk2 keep in mind for kvk2 you can still use all the commanders that i just mentioned mainly like the most el Cid and pyrus those are going to be some of your best options for kvk2 but if you do get alexander the great you can do alexander the great primary with e song a secondary again full infantry and you're going to get a bit more of a tanky commander than you would otherwise with just archers he has instant proc damage he has shielding he has a ton of attack and march speed here for infantry so really a super good pairing in kvk2 and finally if you wanted to you could try to do something like a 5551 saladin with a isong a behind him i know some players do this still it is a budget build it is a sort of hybrid cavalry approach and saladin is just like pyrus benefiting from the bonus damage skill damage on the fourth skill from isong a slightly and he's probably one of the most tanky cavalry commanders you can use in kvk2 and even in the season conquest he's still relatively tanky 30 percent less skill damage and 20 percent less counterattack damage taken pretty good he's got the sport tree so lots to love about saladin but overall i think for kvk2 like if saladin was a kvk1 commander absolutely go for it but he's not so i don't love this but i do know some players use it so it is something you can consider moving into kvk season three and season of conquest this is where you start to get some of the best pairings for isong Ye, but he is a bit power craft at that point unfortunately i would say if you're just landing in a season of conquest today and you do have an expertise isong Ye, your best option for the most offensive commander that you can pair with would be Herman Prime. Herman Prime primary with Lee Song Ye secondary is going to be relatively slightly more tanky than some of your other options. Of course, with your double relic in Lee Song Ye, 
you've got the support tree it's a really nice stuff there but you have two massive aoe's between the two of these commanders you also get a 20 percent aoe skill damage bonus on herman prime which is nice he also gives you 15 percent march speed 20 percent attack 20 percent defense for archers and that's the march speed that you desperately needed for your isong a you also are spreading a poison debuff which is insane you have an instant proc defense reduction here so there's so much to love about herman prime also if you did five 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 one that's a pretty good value build for him and if you wanted to do a talent build for herman prime i would probably do something like this where you put two points into rejuvenate typically you don't need more than that especially with the rage engine on isong Ye. you also get emergency protection here you can grab razor sharp you get venomous sting you grab phoenix tail arrows and then you have one point left over if you want you can go for the gamble with whistling arrows or you can just put the one percent in attack or half percent in health it's up to you what you want that last point to do you can decide for yourself that's probably the best talent build for open field herman ysg and like i said it is probably the best and cheapest and easiest transition in the season of conquest for archers it's just herman prime's amazing ysg is amazing herman kind of fits like a puzzle piece with east song yay they've got lots of defense they've got lots of skill damage aoe damage debuffs and everything it's perfect there's some march speed here this is probably your best choice now if you're going to play on defense then juge leong is going to be your best choice and by defense i mean you're fighting a lot on your own territory you're not moving very far into the enemy territory off territory things like that if that's the case juge leong primary e song secondary is probably the best most powerful aoe pairing in the entire game the downside is that there is no march speed on either commander which means he's mega slow so this is decent for like popping out of your city popping both your active skills hoping you don't get melted in that time and then running back to your city and that's pretty much it so i would say 90 percent players should not use this pairing but in only very specific circumstances where you really can control the army you can really control the engagement and making sure you're not caught out of your out of place because if you are you're going to get melted instantly it's going to fill your hospital instantly you're not going to be able to get away so please 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 if you do juge leong primary ysg secondary there's massive reward but massive risk so keep that in mind and if you do want to use this as the primary commander this is going to be the talent build this is just like with isong ye as primary exact same thing you max out the skill tree then you grab venomous sting and you grab the rest of the points here and in razor sharp and you are good to go beyond those two commanders there are still a few others that you could use in season of conquest but if you're choosing these commanders that means that isong ye is probably on your second or third archer march so keep that in mind but a couple of other choices we have are going to be osher bonapal he is proving to be extremely good in the open field for archers also a five target aoe archer commander he has decent stats he's got some march speed outside of territory he has 15 percent normal damage taken reduction he has 20 percent bonus skill damage on top of what ysg brings so a lot to love about osher bonapal primary but really if you're going to do this pairing then you want to be very careful careful again it's going to be slow on your own territory and also you basically need the expertise to make Asher Bonapal really shine in the open field it's also really RNG based so keep that in mind but at the end of the day Asher Bonapal still a very very solid choice for massive amounts of AOE skill damage on top of that you also have commanders that are you know a little bit older at this point but still something you could use would be Boudicca Prime she has a little less March speed than you see on Herman Prime for example but she does have some decent stats here unfortunately Unfortunately, some of it's below 80%, which kind of sucks, but massive debuff on the active skill, which is nice. She has some skill damage taken reduction, which is going to make your YSG a little bit tankier. And you have some healing factor here, which is pretty cool. So keep that in mind. Also, she's a budget build. You could do 5551, and that is a solid choice. But honestly, this commander pairing does still feel pretty slow in Season of Conquest. So keep that in mind. But it's something that you could do if you're building, like I said, your second or third March. And you've got YSG on the bench, you want to bring him out. You also could do something like a Nebu. Now, Nebu is a bit of an older version of Asher Bonapal. The benefit of Nebu is that his March speed is not conditional and he gets more defense. And he has a really nice debuff and 15% all damage. Still a good choice. Players still use Nebu in the open field to this day. He's not the best choice anymore, but he is faster than, for example, Boudicca Prime. And he has a very nice five target AoE. So you miss out on some, you know, on her debuff and things like that. He's probably, I guess, a little less tanky depending on how you look at it but aoe here is great march speed here is great so it's still something that you could consider with the understanding that it's not your best choice this is probably third march material and finally the last pair i want to talk about is going to be our boy henry where'd he go he's right here henry is 
another choice that you could do the thing with Henry is just like with Audrey Bonapal he's got to be expertise if you want to get the value for him in the open field I think Henry has really kind of fallen off a cliff in open field usage not to say that he's bad he's actually pretty tanky in the open field because he has a support tree because his active seal makes him take 30 percent less skill damage for five seconds which is insane and also you have a nice instant proc damage and the expertise is going to give you some 20 percent less normal damage taken for most of your rage bar which is nice so really he is quite tanky but the downside is there's really no debuff here and the march speed is conditional to being outside your territory so i would say you know really ashabonapal probably a better choice nebu comparable choice better aoe worse tankiness depending on expertise so yeah henry is definitely a choice that you could do some players do still do this for their ysg but personally i think you've got a lot of better options all right and that's pretty much going to do it for ysg in 2024 still extremely usable in the open field for archer players in the end game but mainly as a second or probably more likely a third march at this point which is very unfortunate still dominant in the early game still one of the best commanders in the early game and still one of the only commanders that can sort of transition the season of conquest effortlessly but has definitely fallen from grace and is no longer like the best single commander in rise of kingdoms it is very unfortunate i look forward to seeing what his upgraded relic might be maybe we'll see it by the end of the year who knows really i would love to see ysg get some march speed make him a little bit more usable in the end game i think that is really the main thing that is holding him back but guys i would love to hear from you in the comment section below did you expertise ysg do you regret it do you not do you still use him are you a new player are you gonna get him i want to hear from you guys down there and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and like i said earlier consider subscribing we're so close to 70,000. click the button click the bell if you want to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace